Alright guys, welcome back to more Ignorance in Basketball. Now, it's such a beautiful thing that the Suns are making moves. Now, Suns have acquired Tory Craig, I don't know if you heard, for cash considerations, which I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know if that just means like, hey, maybe we'll think about paying you, but maybe we won't. Cash considerations, we're considering the cash. But maybe it's just a way of like sounding a little bit less fucked up than just saying for cash, because that does sound a little bit fucked up, not gonna lie. But this is a beautiful day for, for us Suns fans because we didn't lose anything. The only motherfucker that lost anything was the owner of the Suns. He just had to pay a little bit more, a little bit more money. <laughs> and that's not our problem, baby. That's not our problem. So I don't know much about Tory Craig, to be honest. Uh, this is what, fourth year in the league? Yeah. Um, let's, let's go through some stats. Let's go through some stats. Cause this year he got hoed. He was drafted by Denver and then he got traded to Milwaukee. They cut his fucking minutes in half. So I don't even feel comfortable. You know, I feel like it's a little bit fucked up if we go by his stats this year. Let's just go by career. So career we got, he's played 190 games. We got five points a game, you know, nothing crazy. Rebounds about three and a half. Assists a little less than one. He shoots about 44. Uh, 45% from the field, 32, 33% from three, free throw, 65, god damn, what the hell, <laughs> okay, effective field goal, I don't give a shit about that, I, I, I want to know the real one, so, you know, the stats aren't, you know, they're not jumping off the fucking page, but I feel like this team needs a couple things, maybe a backup guard, another backup guard, uh, some athleticism, and and some rim protection. Those are kind of the same thing. So I'm hoping Tory Craig is 6'7". He seems like a typical 3 and D guy. So once we face the Lakers, if they don't lose earlier, maybe he could be the guy to guard him. Because Crowder's a little small. I mean, Crowder's what, like an inch shorter? He's only 6'6". He's probably a smarter defender. Like I said, I don't know much about Tory Craig. I saw a little bit of him um, in that Nuggets, in some of the Nuggets series, but... I'm not going to act like I know a fuck ton about Tory Craig. So maybe he's the athletic three that can guard him. I don't know. Kind of like a, what's the dude that was on the fucking thunder with the really fucked up jump shot who was out of the league for like two years that dates that really skinny white girl on like a fucking 2K or whatever. I don't know her name or his name, but I'll put him on the fucking screen if I can figure it out. Um, Roberson. There it is. Andre Roberson. You know, I have the fucking memory of an elephant. And that's just another trait that I have that's positive. So what do you guys think about Tory Craig? Let me fucking know because like I said, I don't know shit about the guy. I'm assuming we're going to take this as a win. The cult is taking this as a win because we didn't trade anything. Not even a second round draft pick. Just cash. That is best case scenario. And there is no way on fucking God's green earth that this motherfucker is worse than Damian Jones. I don't know what was happening. Maybe he's allergic to the fucking uniforms of Phoenix, but that motherfucker was civilian as all hell. Like, did his girlfriend break up with him? I don't know what his fucking mental problems were when he was in Phoenix, but he, if I was wearing his fucking jersey, I could have done more. That's how bad he was, and I am not good at basketball, but I could tr I could set a screen better than that. I'll never forget the screen he set. How do you, I don't even, I'm not even going to get into that. I'm not even going to get into that, but it's funny that this happened right now because last night I was making a video about LaMarcus Aldridge because I was watching ESPN because obviously I don't like myself that much, and uh, Zach Lowe they were talking about LaMarcus Aldridge, so it seems like, because your boy's been doing some research, seems like he's going to get bought out. I don't think he has a lot of high trade value right now. So they were talking about where they think he's going to go, and Zach said his favorite spot was Phoenix to take the Kaminsky minutes, and I was like, that is a fucking brilliant point, because we all know LaMarcus Aldridge is not the LaMarcus Aldridge from like four or five years ago, or hell, even two years ago, but the fucking Suns need a four. They switch off between Kaminsky and in Crowder, depending on the size of the opposing team. And let's be real, like, Kaminsky's not perfect. He's, like, okay. Um, but any weaknesses that Aldridge has, maybe besides, like, him bringing in locker room problems, which I doubt that's going to happen, you know, fucking fingers crossed. 
any weaknesses LaMarcus has, Kaminsky has the same ones. Like, neither of them are great defenders. I would say LaMarcus Aldridge is a little better, though. Um, you know, neither of them are super athletic, but at least LaMarcus is taller. LaMarcus is a better all-around scorer. Like, because when that bench unit is in, like, who can really make tough shots if, like, Chris Paul or Booker is not on, on the court at all? Like, who can you go to if you need a bucket? Like, we don't really have that guy. Kaminsky is not really a shot like creator. Cameron Payne, sometimes when he wants to be, he, he I feel like he's really quick, and he could take whoever off the dribble. But, you know, if you're just going full speed, half court, that could turn into a turnover really fast. So if you can just get it, kick it to LaMarcus and have him try to shoot like a, a mid-range jumper, that's a bucket whenever you need it. I'm not saying he's going to make it every time, but that's somebody that that bench unit can go to if they need a point. Um, so I think that's a good thing. And really, like, with LaMarcus, Devin Booker, and Chris Paul, this is like the fucking mid-range gods of the NBA, all on one team. And LaMarcus almost signed with, signed with the Suns um, a couple years ago, so maybe some of that allure is still there. I don't know. So... I think those that would be a good fit. Let me know what you guys think. I'm not really sure of like who else I've heard of. JaVale McGee, maybe he'll get bought out. That'd be great because, like I said, the Suns need another rim protector. Because I saw one of you guys commented, I forgot who, but it's like if Aiton's not in, who do you have? Not really anybody, especially as far as like rim protecting goes. It's like nobody. And if Aiden's having a bad day, you have nobody. Now, obviously, I'm not saying LaMarcus is a rim protector. But again, just like the um, the fuck is his name? Craig, Tory Craig um, situation. It's just a buyout. So we're not losing. It's not like a big trade or anything. I mean, for Craig, they didn't even like I said, they didn't even fucking get a lose a draft pick. It was strictly cash. So I think it would be the same thing with Aldridge if he gets bought out. So this is a great fucking position that the Suns are in. I mean, their team is rolling. They don't really have any huge flaws. And um, they're still able... I think they'll be attractive enough to get a couple... Well, they got one. I mean, it was it was really a trade. It's not like Torrey Craig chose to go to Phoenix. But I'm hoping they'll be able to attract a buyout candidate. Because it seems like there might be a couple. Like Drummond. I feel like he's just going to go to the fucking Lakers if... If he gets bought out again, I did some research and it seems like that's not going to happen. seems like the Cavs want something for him. And I'm pretty sure this man's getting fucking paid. So I don't think he's going to get bought out. But I didn't think Blake was going to get bought out. And I was dead wrong about that one. So we'll see. Also, speaking of doing research, while I was researching Lamar- the LaMarcus shit, I was on um, the Spurs page, which felt gross, I got to admit. But I saw this motherfucker and I was like, God damn, bro, this is why you need people in your life to tell you no, because this man looks like he has a bleach coons cap on his fucking head. And he is so oblivious to how ridiculous he looks. He's willing to go on television, not just regular television, but basketball television. Okay, where people like me watch. And will just rip him to shreds. And um, that's just a life lesson. Keep people around you who will tell you the truth. Because clearly that's not somebody who's doing it. Because I've never seen that man in my life. But that whole video, all I could do was stare at his head. It's not like it's not noticeable. It's very noticeable. He looks like he cut his grandson's scalp off and glued it to his head. You look like a crazy person. Um... And that's just, you know, that's just the truth. So, again, let me know what you guys think. Are there any other trades or buyout candidates or anything that you think the Suns need to go for? What weaknesses do you think this team has? Like I'm saying, guys, I really think, like, especially this year, the Suns need to fucking go for it. I know a lot of you guys are worried about the Lakers, but look, the Lakers are weak right now. They lost, I think that Dwight and them, them losing Dwight and McGee hurt them harder than people realize. Because once that weakened their interior defense, because Marcus Hall is not a fucking rim protector. Harrell is not a fucking rim protector. And remember in that Sun series, how, or not Sun series, in that Nugget series against the Lakers, how vital Dwight and JaVale were because they were really shutting down Jokic. And if they didn't have that, who knows what would happen? And 
once you weaken your interior defense, that weakens the perimeter defense too because it's harder to stay right, right on you if if I can't trust the guy behind me is going to be able to block your shot if you just blow right past me. So I don't know. I really think, and with like AD's health being questionable, and I don't think we're going to have any issues with LeBron. And them losing Rondo, that's fucking bigger too. And KCP hasn't been playing as well. Now, maybe they'll kick it in and figure it out in the playoffs. Maybe they won't. But the West and the East really are fucking wide open right now. So that's why I'm saying it's ring season. It's not just me talking out of my ass. I pay attention. I don't fucking believe in the Clippers. Look, look, listen, guys. Like, the Clippers are like two games away from being the Portland Trailblazers who have been injured all fucking year. And have never really been a great team, let's be honest. And everybody rides their fucking dick, and I really don't understand why. Because I think if Porzingis was healthy, they would have lost in the first round last year. Easy. I mean, they went fucking six games with the Mavs team that wasn't really that good. Let's be real. So, I really don't understand why everybody rides the fucking Clippers dick. I think it's just because of Kawhi and he... He did well with the Raptors, but again, if the Raptors played against a healthy Warriors team, they probably would have lost in five. So, hate to be that guy just shitting on every team, but I'm just being honest. I really think the Suns need to go for it. Now, if, like, let's just say they just get Torrey Craig and nobody else, I still think they have a good shot, but I really do think they need to get another rim protector besides Aiton to come off the bench. Um... And help with rebounding, too, because this, this team can get killed on the boards. And when they're going against a four that's good, it's tough. Um, but I don't know. I don't really know if there's much else to talk about. Let me know what you guys think about the Toy Craig or any other trades and shit. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.